these Olympics were definitely completely different. So um, how was your journey impacted with COVID and all of the different stuff? And like, what setbacks did you really deal with? Mm -hmm. Well, this Olympics was obviously very different, even though I hadn't been to a previous Olympics, I already knew going in that it might look a little different than um, any of the other Olympics. Um, but it was very locked down. Like I thought we would have a little bit of freedom at least to like explore or talk to people from other countries. Um, and so we did a, a, a training camp beforehand in a place called Gifu and we weren't allowed to leave our rooms. We got escorted everywhere. We were only allowed to eat and train. And so everyone back home was thinking that I'm at the Olympics. I'm having this crazy time. Like, obviously I'm very grateful to be at the Olympics and there is a job to do. Like my main focus is to compete, but you want to take in the Olympic experience. And I think this one was very different in that you, um, do all this training you're so set on on going to the olympics and you want to have a little bit of fun because you're like this is the biggest stage if i get too in my head if i'm too focused on competition then it could go wrong because you're too focused on it you need a little bit of balance and so i think it was hard sometimes for a lot of the athletes to um find that outlet while we were there we felt very um trapped in our rooms we felt like trying to to get out of thinking about our competitions because there's so much pressure on us and so I think that was the main challenge when we were there is like trying to find a way to get out of your head a little bit. And when you're at your home in the comfort of your own home, you can do the things you like. If you like gaming or if you like watching, binging Netflix or whatever, um, that wasn't as easily accessible. Like the Olympics are on every TV at, at the dining halls and in your rooms and everything. So I think trying to step out of that mind frame for a second was really hard in that environment. Um, but, um, maybe it worked for some people, but for me, I definitely was happy to come back and, and find a little bit of like therapy and something else. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Um, <clears throat> that's a good point. I didn't really think of, but I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to like, remember of what I was doing. Yeah. I was definitely trying to stay busy and I mean, to the best of my ability, obviously before I competed, but what you're saying of, yeah, you want to take in the experience. I mean, it is literally a celebration of all of the hard work that you've done and not just like four years or five years in the situation, but like years, it's not like you started training five years ago for these Olympics, but you were training your entire life and you made it. This was your goal. You made it. So like, while you are here to work, you're also here to like acknowledge that achievement and celebrate it but yeah no definitely I, like I said I didn't think of the fact of obviously everybody sitting in the rooms and and not being able to just like not think about the Olympics like that's so much free time <clears throat> though in a way I spoke in a previous episode about it is I think well obviously it was not fun for the elite, uh, for the athletes but watching it as an Olympian maybe as other people kind of realize this I think this was like the most like genuine and like human that we have ever seen the Olymp Olympians. I think we even maybe talked about this when we saw each other, but like you didn't have your support system there. You didn't have time to like step away and like, you know, like not deal with this. Like you had to deal with all of your emotions. And like for, the, for me, at least for the first time ever, like it didn't seem like we're all robots. That's what everybody always seems to think that we're just robots. We're out there competing, whatever. This is our job. Like we're not emotional, but you saw everybody's emotions like so much more when they won, when they lost. So, I mean, I'm getting chills thinking about it because again, that's never been the case. Like we've just had our support systems and everything. And for the first time ever, we just, everybody was just a human being. Yeah. I wonder if that's like a product of going through so many more additional struggles to get there, or if it's because there were no spectators. So you don't feel as many eyes on you. So you feel more comfortable to release your emotions. So I'm not sure which, maybe it's, it's, uh, it's both combined. Like yeah. when we, we just are finally at the Olympics and we're like, wow, this really happened. We like, didn't think it was going to happen. It seems so uncertain. And so I think people have been building up all this emotion to, to get to that point. And then finally they achieve what they've been wanting to achieve and they can't control what they're feeling anymore. And there's no one there to like, to uh kind of limit them on how they're feeling either like they feel they're within um this group of other people who just did the same thing as them so i think they feel comfortable to show that but i agree with you i think that uh everyone there was a little bit more comfortable where their emotions on their sleeve and it was really cool to see as well and it felt me it felt more comfortable for me to be myself while i was competing so a really cool atmosphere for sure 
yeah <clears throat> so yeah that was like i said that was a really interesting thing to see um obviously like i said i mean it sucks because i know how much pressure it is and how how that feels and like when when even like we won a medal which was like winning i mean i was able to like hug my my two best friends that were there my family couldn't come but like i couldn't imagine how shitty that would feel not having that or even worse not not meddling and not being able to just like hug somebody like teammates are teammates but like at the same time like we can we really are only friends to a certain degree because we're all competing against each other <clears throat> so maybe you have somebody like for us we have different weapons so like we're not direct competition yeah but like in your direct weapon I mean again we all compete against each other so it's none of us are just best friends because that's physically impossible we're also rivals I can't imagine what it would be like for someone like we're both like older athletes now and they're in some other sports like gym gymnastics and they compete at such a young age and not having your day be able to have your parents there would be like so impactful you have to grow up really quick and I'm obviously like we're both experienced and we've done many competitions on our own but um I mean I went through something that I hadn't gone through before like I was like physically ill on the second day and I was struggling to get through the competition and I remember being in the medical tent after like them trying to to help me recover from whatever I was going through and I was like wow and I didn't have my phone or anything because they take it from you and I, I all I wanted was just my mom to be there I was like well yeah. my mom doesn't even know what I was going through she's like probably stressing out in Canada on the other side of the phone um wondering what I'm doing, why I'm not responding, why I'm not out there doing the victory lap with all the other heptathletes. And so it's just like moments like that, you really need your support system. And so I can't imagine what it would be like for people who haven't had the experience that we've both had. Like that would be heartbreaking for them. Yeah, no, it's absolutely true. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay, so what we kind of touched on what it feels like. Well, for you guys, do you guys have a lot of fans normally when you compete or not so much? only at like really big competitions but right now we have a ranking system <clears throat> and I'm not sure if it's similar to your guys's but it's it's um you have to go to really competitive competitions in order to rank high in the world and so you don't really play with like the smaller meets anymore you kind of build your schedule based off of who's in the meets uh, what they're ranked off of like the IWF ranking system which is like the world athletic ranking system mm -hmm. um and then you pick which competitions you're going to go to based off of those two, uh, those two like factors. Um, so the only meets I go to anymore are, are overseas and they're, they're really well known. So usually there are a lot of people, but if I'm just doing open events, like here in, uh, in Canada or in Toronto, then there's like literally no one. And it could be, it could right. be like a practice meet. So uh, I'm used to both, I think, which is, is really good training. So maybe some people other people aren't like maybe basketball or like um some other sports that like soccer might not be used to that environment that makes sense so then for you you weren't really affected by the fact that there was no fans no I actually think it was a bit better for me because I was looking I remember on the last event when I was like on my deathbed <laughs> I was like looking out into because we we're doing our introductions and where you kind of run out and they say your name and stuff like that and I could see the top of the stands from where I was standing um, before the inter introduction and I was like I can't imagine what this stadium would look like with every seat full like how intimidating would that be first of all I'm not don't even feel well enough to compete right now and yet I am but with the full stadium like of all these people I think it would just be so overwhelming with all of the other issues that I was experiencing at that time so I think it was a benefit in my situation um, but uh, I think maybe if the schedule is better, maybe the, the weather was a little bit better, not as hot, um, then I would be excited to have that many people. And hopefully one day I will, just so I can see what it's like and see if I can yeah. handle that type of pressure. It'd be interesting. Yeah, so for us, it was completely opposite in Rio because normally our competitions, <coughs> like our ones, fencing does a pretty poor job of marketing, depending on what country we're in. Um, at our competitions in America, they now even limited who's allowed to come into the venue. Like it's only, you're allowed to have, I don't remember, they started charging, but they also for COVID reasons, obviously now they have a different policy, but at some point they started charging for like safety purposes. Um, and like, who's really gonna pay for fencing? 
also they're not even marketing it. So like we can be in somebody's town and nobody even knows about it, which is ridiculous, different topic. But um, so we don't usually have a lot of people in our stadiums, maybe at world championships, but it's still usually just mostly fencers anyway, or like parents, coaches. So I remember walking out at the Olympics, like thankfully, like <clears throat> our psychologists were like, just make sure you're out in the venue, like you're out there seeing things. So you're kind of at least used to these big crowds since you guys don't get to experience them. But like, I remember walking out the day we competed, even still, I already saw the venue. I've already been out there. I, it felt like somebody was walking around with their hands around my throat. Mm. Like I couldn't breathe. Like I couldn't process it. Like it was just so insane to me. Also, we don't even have cameras when we're competing. So I had like, we had cameras following us and I remember being told, so I was an alternate and then they have weird rules at the Olympics that you can't change people throughout the day. Like when you change, you change permanently and nobody else can go back, which is different for us on other competitions. And so we kind of waited until last minute in case somebody had an injury uh, because we all had older, like we had older athletes on the team. So they put me out for the bronze medal match. So like, that's already an absurd amount of pressure. I hadn't competed the entire day. So like, that's my first moment. And I remember like, first of all, being told that I would compete and I like went into panic mode, but again, through like knowing and years of all this, I like talked myself back and I was like, this is just a job. Like you've done this before. The only difference is there's a crowd. Like you've already even fenced this girl. You're going to fence. You've beaten her like nothing to worry about. I'm just going to get out there, do as fast as we can and be done. <clears throat> yeah. And then like, as we're competing in my head, I'm like, maybe we don't really need me. Like maybe I shouldn't even do this. And then I'm like getting up, my coach is giving me a pep talk and there's a camera like in my face. I'm just kind of like, please leave me alone. This is not the time. And like stepping out there was insane. Like <clears throat> all these people screaming, like I said, cameras everywhere. It was a complete difference for me. So I feel like at least for the fencing aspect, for the fencers, having an empty state, like empty stadium was probably helpful for them. Yeah. But yeah, I was, I was just curious of 